Welcome back to the Lincoln Industrial Channel. I'm John with the Technical Support Team. Today I'd like to share with you the proper air motor mounting procedure for our pile driver and Power Master industrial pump assemblies. To show the process, I have on our stand the Power Master Stub Pump Model 2028. Pump tube and air motor configuration vary based on dispensing requirements needed for your particular application. For information pertaining to the tested and approved pump model configurations, please review the options in our industrial pumping catalog. Give me just a moment to pull this unit apart and we'll begin. The unit will arrive broken down into the two main components, the pump tube and the air motor. Begin by installing the tie rods to the air motor. Add one drop of Loctite to the threads and tighten each to 30 foot pounds. Line up the air motor tie rod ends with the four bolt holes in the outlet body. The air motor may be mounted in any one of four directions depending on your application or space requirements. Next, tightly thread the pump tube plunger coupling nut to the air motor piston rod. Lock nuts are supplied with the air motor and must be used. Failure to use them may lead to air motor coming loose or out of alignment over time due to vibrations. It will be a little struggle, but use a long wrench or impact for added leverage to thread them up the tie rod, but do not fully tighten just yet. We must align the air motor piston rod and pump tube plunger rod next. Allow the air motor to cycle a few strokes, then stop the assembly in the upstroke position. Torque the tie rod nuts to between 65 and 75 foot-pounds. A few quick notes to go over before we sign off today. First, safety. Make sure you're wearing the proper PPE while working around these pumps. Additional to safety glasses, gloves, and steel-toed boots, you may want to have a pair of hearing protection standing by in case the decibel levels are too high for your work area. Next, keep your hands and all body parts away from the pump tube inlet as well as the rod coupling area while the unit is under pressure. These pumps will not stop for anything, so unless you want to crush or lose fingers, steer clear of these areas of moving components. If you have concerns with accessibility to the moving rod, we offer the air motor cover kit. Slide this over the tie rod assemblies to cover the moving rod assembly to prevent injury. If you need to work on these pumps for any reason, follow the proper lockout tagout procedures. Be sure to shut off the air supply and disconnect the air line from the pump assembly before beginning. Next is the air requirements for these units. They require very large volumes of air to run sufficiently. This four and a quarter inch air motor will consume up to 1.1 cubic feet of air per cycle at 100 PSI. And this six inch air motor sitting here consumes up to 1.6 cubic feet per cycle. I'll list on the screen the other air motor consumption rates and minimum specifications on line size recommended for the different air motor sizes. Also check the description for a link to a folder with performance charts for the different pump setups. It is imperative that you use adequate air volume for these assemblies while under load in the field. Failure to use proper line sizes and supply volume will result in damage to the air system, erratic pump cycling, and failure to cycle like this. Lastly, these pumps require clean, dry air, so be sure to pick up a filter regulator combo unit recommended for your setup. For the four and a quarter inch air motor used in the demonstration, the half inch filter regulator combination we offer is recommended. You should never run one of these pumping units, or for that matter, any pneumatic tool without a filter regulator assembly and a shutoff valve. A lubricator is not recommended or necessary for the use with these air motors as they are assembled using a special lubricant. However, if you must use a lubricator in your air system, make sure you have it set to the lowest output setting and never runs empty. I hope this tutorial helped with setting up your pump. If it did, please give us a thumbs up so we know you found this useful. For any further assistance, feel free to contact our technical support team at the information on the screen. Also, feel free to subscribe to our channel for more useful tutorial and informational videos. This is John with the technical support team. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.